Welcome back to SimulNet. I'm your host, Patrick Elliott. I'm actually just delighted uh, to be joined today by uh, Bobkin uh, Del Grigorian. He's the um, co-founder and CEO of Cartes Analytica, which is the first Armenian private company uh, to receive a space license. Is that correct? Correct. So we're actually recording this um, just on the heels of a monumentous uh, event, which you'll undoubtedly unpack for us in, in this, uh, this session here. But um, Armenia has uh, finally signed the Artemis Accords uh, as of yesterday. So tell us a, a little bit about this. Why is this significant? What are the uh, Artemis Accords and why is it such a big deal for us? Sure. Thanks, Pat, for having me on. We've been talking about doing this for a while, so happy to be on. Um, you know, it's actually kind of a big deal, the Artemis Accords. Um, a bit of background, what the Artemis Accords are, it's a reference to the Artemis program, which is NASA's next generation moon program, Artemis being the sister of Apollo. Cute, right? Yeah. Um, and the Artemis Accords were set up to invite international participation and international cooperation in the Artemis program. So. By Armenia signing on to this, first of all, it wasn't an, an inevitability. It's not like every country is signed on. Armenia is the 43rd country to sign on. Um, interestingly, the process has been going on quite rapidly. So when Armenia started this, it was there were about 20 countries, uh, 23. Uh, and Armenia became the 43rd country yesterday to sign on. What are, are the only in the region? Um, Ukraine is in there, if you count that in the region. I just uh, mean our neighbors. No. Uh, I mean, yes, we are the only ones uh, oh. in the region. Interesting. Uh, and very telling. Mm. Uh, India is also a member of the Artemis Accords. Um, the Artemis Accords are a framework and a set of principles for governing uh, space activities and space cooperation. What does that mean for Armenia tangibly? Um, by joining the Artemis Accords, they're going to there, Armenia is adopting a set of standards for interoperability, for transparency, for data uh, access. And this gives Armenia the opportunities for things like tech transfers and knowledge transfers that will uh, really supercharge not just the space sector, but uh, the economy in general and um, our technological capabilities uh, domestically. Um, but it's just the first step. I mean, it's, a, it's an agreement. It's uh, significant, um, you know, at the risk of sounding cheesy, it's one small step for man, but one giant leap for Armenia, it really is. <laughs> nice. um, and it's inspirational for the next generation of Armenians, um, but it's it lays the groundwork for uh, more actions that need to take place in the future. But with such a small country and such limited resources, are we able to make a significant contribution? Because there's, there's kind of this I mean, it's obviously nitpicking here, but a lot of the comments uh, online uh, is something like, oh, it's just yet another feel good measure, right? It's nothing really tangible. Uh, it's just this, oh, great, we're kind of joining the international community one step at a time. But um, what can we meaningfully contribute to this? I mean, that couldn't be more wrong. Good to know. Um, yes, it it's feel good, but it, that's not the point here. Mm. Armenia's engagement in, in the space sector is not a feel good measure, I would argue that it's an imperative for Armenia. We're a landlocked country. We have the sky, we have the space, and we need to uh, take advantage of that to its fullest capacity. This is for national security reasons, this is for sovereignty reasons, but it's also for supercharging our economy. Um, Armenia has a huge potential to contribute already through its IT sector. Uh, what the IT sector gives us here is a large pool of uh, well-trained, um, developers, engineers, uh, experts in high tech that can very easily pivot to the space sector uh, and use their knowledge in a much more strategic way for Armenia's benefit. So I would uh, not look at Armenia's size and say that, you know, there's nothing to contribute there. Um, you know, Luxembourg is also a small country and it's got a pretty decent space program. Um, but again, this is just the, uh, the first steps. What really needs to happen is the things that, that have to come after this in order to uh, take advantage of the opportunities that the Artemis Accords gives us. So let's let's go a little bit deeper. You mentioned some, um, you know, this is this is something imperative for us from a, a standpoint of sovereignty and uh, and and security. So how how will the Ar Artemis Accords or us being a signatory to it? How does that contribute positively to Armenia's uh, defense? Um, again, it goes back to the knowledge transfers and the tech transfers that we have the opportunity to uh, capitalize on with our participation 
and the Artemis Accords, but it also increases our international cooperation. Um, it makes us part of that community of countries that are looking to um, make new strides in the space sector. Um, with that, you also get um, venture capital interests. So one of the, um, I wouldn't call it a hard prerequisite, but definitely space tech related uh, VC funds look for countries that have signed onto the Artemis Accords as potential uh, investment opportunities. Okay, but so so that's on the economic side of things. I, I definitely want to cover that, but I am curious in in yeah. So so knowledge transfer. I don't. I just. I'm just not understanding how space helps us more. You know, being more active in space helps us be more secure on the ground. Um, I can give you two examples: yeah. Earth observation and communications. Two two things that we've we've been you know very weak in actually, and we know this from the 2020 wars. We sure. had no idea what was going on, where the troop movements were, and so on. Absolutely, and yeah. you know I wouldn't be too hard on Armenia for that. This is a new area for most countries. Uh, there's been a huge paradigm shift in Earth observations, for example, over the last few years. The things that we can do today uh, on a much more effect, uh, efficient budget, we couldn't do in 2020. It just wasn't, the, the, the sector wasn't that um, developed globally. Mm. You know, the number of satellites in, in orbit have more than quadrupled since 2020. Wow. Like, think about that. Think years. about the, the, the paradigm shift that that presents. And so if, you know, five, six years ago, the problem was about uh, access to uh, Earth observation data or uh, images, that's essentially a solved problem. Uh, but that means now we have to um, know what we're doing with that data. We have to analyze that data. We have to, it's too much data. It's a lot of data and it's a lot of um very specific kinds of data that can be used for not only national security, but also beyond. Um, on communications, like I said, we're a landlocked country. Remember that uh, a few years ago? I guess it was already a decade ago at this point. Uh, you know what I'm going to, the story I'm going to bring. The Georgian woman who was... Uh, the Armenian woman from Georgia who the, cut the internet. Who cut cable. the internet to all of Armenia. Yeah. I mean... Of course, it's our own people who are... <laughs> yeah, the exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Satellites provide an opportunity for us to have unfeathered, full access, no matter what. Um, the third way, and actually I, I'm looking at the, the photo right behind you, and it's a perfect example. It's literally staring us in the face of what a great opportunity it is. That's a ground station hmm. that communicates with satellites. Um, Armenia's participation in the Artemis Accords increases our ability to attract uh, strategic ground stations to be placed in Armenia. Uh, and that increases our national security Yeah, it makes us by having valuable. strategic assets that makes us more valuable. And actually, Armenia is in a very interesting geographic location in that respect. How so? Well, think about wh what is to the north of us and what is to the south of us mm -hmm. and, and uh, satellites ascending and descending. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, satellites can now down, downlink into Armenia and be able to provide data faster to their customers. Hmm. Let's, uh, you mentioned customers, so let's move to the economic side of things. How is this uh, economically beneficial for Armenia? I mean, so let's look at the global space sector. Uh, according to Morgan Stanley, in 2022, the global space economy is was roughly half a trillion dollars, $500 billion. Over the next 15 years, that's estimated to grow to uh, over a trillion dollars. So more than double in the next 15 years. So we're looking at around 9% growth globally. Now, uh, either Armenia can take part in that growth or it can sit in the sidelines. What the Artemis Accords uh, and other things like the Artemis Accords, I don't want to single out the Artemis Accords as the, the silver uh, bullet here. It's one of multiple things that need to happen. But uh, what this allows is Armenia to, to have a say and have a participation in that growth in the space economy. Now, uh, space economy specifically is talking about Things that are directly related to space, uh, satellite manufacturing, Earth observations, all that. But what's even more interesting is the benefits of space tech for the non-space sector. So think about agriculture, think about mining, think about uh, insurance, urban planning, the list goes on. 
is there like kind of a pattern developing within the government? Um, in other words, is there an understanding that space is kind of the next frontier that Armenia needs to explore? Because you're noticing, you know, you had the this Mars mission uh, that the EU had organized uh, was a couple a couple of months ago. You know, and then and uh, we had the uh, a year before that we had this first satellite uh, that was launched, and then there's there's talk of now second satellite that Armenia is going to launch. Um, so, well, Armenia technically there's two satellites already registered to okay. Armenia. One of them is uh, state owned. One of them was private. But yeah, fair enough. Well, so do you see this as kind of like an emerging pattern that the Armenian government has understood the importance of space, or is it just kind of like the usual where it's the private private Armenians who are taking initiative and just kind of moving things ahead and the government's kind of playing catch up? You know, space is that sector where if you don't have government buy-in, at least at a certain level, you're, you're not going to be able to move forward. It's not like the IT sector where you could just leave it alone and, you know, it'll, it'll naturally grow and then eventually the government like, oh, we have the sector right here. No, space isn't like that. Hmm. Um, but I would say the government, um, there is a bit of a lack of grand vision on what needs to happen. There's a general understanding and a general willingness, um, for example, the space activities law that was passed in 2020. It's actually a pretty decent law. Uh, the licensing scheme that came out of it is, you know, functional. What, what does the law stipulate? Uh, so the law essentially regulates uh, the, defines what space activities are, regulates the activities of that, uh, defines uh, what they, the authorized body on space activity. So this is the part of the law that hasn't fully been uh, really implemented yet. Um, which is the authorized body on space activities, essentially in Armenian NASA. So part of the Artemis program, I'm sorry, part of the Artemis Accords would be to help Armenia's cap uh, capacity building in establishing the national space program and a national space agency. Um, so, but, you know, in order to do that, you need to have a broad strategy for there's, it's been four years now since the law was passed. They've been working on a space strategy for the last two, two and a half. Still hasn't uh, actually uh, approved, been approved. Um, Which ministry would this fall under? This is this is uh, squarely under the Ministry of High Tech. Okay, so it has nothing to do with like territorial administration or no, but it, but it does it 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 does benefit them. They are the beneficiaries, but uh, and and all, you know many other state uh, state bodies. But it's the the space activity and the uh, authorized body would be under the Ministry of High Tech. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what do you think Armenia should be doing next? What should be the main the main focus? How do you see, you said there's a lack of grand strategy. So let's put you in the in the government's chair here. What should be the grand strategy and what are the next steps Armenia should take? So Armenia needs a space agency, an aerospace agency. And uh, it needs to be one that is, that puts the benefits of citizens first, which is very, uh, not easy to do, but clear. It's a very clearly defined, uh, goal. It needs to, uh, really focus on the kinds of activities that, uh, increase our sovereignty, increase our national security and, and have that be the driving, uh, force behind our grant our space strategy on our national space program, you know, like some countries establish space programs to, uh, explore distant galaxies. I don't know if that's necessarily what we need to do. Uh, that's cool too. Don't get me wrong, but that's not going to be the thing that, you know, convinces the ministry of finance to, uh, dish out the, uh, the required, uh, finances. But also I think, you know, this is about establishing a, a link between Armenia's past and future. Armenia has a legacy of space activities and space exploration. Burakan is a perfect example of this. I think not, maybe not very many people know this, but the, the first rover ever to leave Earth and land on another body, celestial body, celestial yeah. body was designed by an Armenian. It was a uh, Lunokhid Adin uh, by Alexander Khaimurian. Uh, and actually, interestingly, one of the things in the Artemis Accords is about the uh, preservation of cultural space, cultural heritage, which I think was kind of interesting. Uh, maybe Armenia should should uh, take ownership of that lone rover that's still on the moon and is still used for 
uh, calibration as part of our space cultural heritage. First Christian country and first on the moon. Yeah. <laughs> well, you laugh about that, but... No, it's it's actually extreme. It's it's extremely impressive. Yeah. And that's why I say this is actually a big deal. Like, the what happened with this signing is the first step to seeing an Armenian flag on the moon in the within our lifetime. And I say that in all seriousness. This is what's interesting to me also is how how are we able to I mean throughout our history right we've been we've been very impressive in our cultural contributions to other countries right and I was just thinking the other day about how uh, when you had the Cuban missile crisis right on both sides of the negotiations you had Armenians yeah right yeah. Um, so you you had um, uh, oh I'm I'm, I'm blanking M- Mikoyan, Mikoyan, on Anastas side, Mikoyan, yeah. and you had uh, yeah uh, on the American side it was uh, Ignatius right yeah. Um, so you had, you had you had two Armenians essentially involved in preventing the, the the destruction of the planet, and and it just got me thinking how like how kind of it's 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 kind of Lord of the Rings esque, right? Where you have these hobbits who are just in this larger world that they don't really belong in, and it's like we're kind of giggling about it. But at what point will that stop being the case? And so I think the Artemis Accords and 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 the the grand vision you're laying out is really fascinating because it's kind of a, 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 it's kind of this like this chance for us to stop being contributors by proxy and to, to really become, uh, you know, like you said, put the Armenian flag on the on the moon, uh, which is which is quite impressive. So what would you say would be the immediate next step that needs to take place? Now that these things, these these accords have been signed. Uh, what comes now? What happens? The next step is for uh, Armenia to, to really clearly define its space strategy, taking into account that it is now a member of the Artemis Accords. Uh, having as, as one of the pillars of that space strategy, the international cooperation that comes with that, the knowledge transfers that come with that, the tech transfers that come with that, the interoperability that comes with that, and really uh, def- well clearly defining our space asset strategy, our ground asset strategy, uh, our geospatial data strategy, and having that be a comprehensive sort of uh, action plan for what a, a national uh, space program should look like. The, the, the fact the fact that we are now signatories of the Artemis Court means we have no excuse. We need a national space program. We need a national space agency. Hope to see that uh, sooner rather than later. Bob Kinjan, thank you so much for, My pleasure. Uh, for joining us. And thanks again for watching CivilNet.